my my hands were shaking so much i had to talk myself through it like okay let's get this chain on let's uh get it in the right gear before i hop on and i'm in a hard gear yeah so that was that was uh i was pretty impressed in how i how i handled that Welcome to the Canadian Cycling Magazine podcast. I'm Matthew Pioro. You just heard from Carter Woods. You'll find out later more about that tense situation he encountered in a World Cup race earlier this year. From about mid-April to July, Woods and his Norco Factory cross-country team had a long European campaign, competing in a variety of events, including four World Cup races. Woods won the under-23 race in Albstad, Germany. That's notable not only because it's his first World Cup win, but it's the first World Cup win by an elite Canadian man since Jeff Kabush won in Bromont in 2009. Then, just a week after Albstad, Woods won another World Cup. That was Nova Mesto in the Czech Republic. Not too shabby, eh? Woods and I not only discuss World Cups, which the Cumberland BC native will compete in once again in September, but we touch on the racing scene on Vancouver Island, which was important in his development as a rider. We talk cyclocross, another racing discipline that he excels in. Remember, Woods is the 2019 junior national champion. We start with bikepacking. Before our chat, Woods had just gotten back from a tour on the island. It was a way to explore his home turf and prepare for the second part of his season. Carter Woods, we are speaking at the beginning of August. You recently got back from a bikepacking trip that started at the north end of Vancouver Island. How was it? It was a blast. I hadn't been to the northern tip of Vancouver Island in forever, so um, it was cool to go there and um, yeah, spend spend a while checking out the road back. And it was a great experience and super fun base miles. You say base miles. Before I get into that, can you just tell me a little bit more about how the bike packing setup worked? Because, you know, there's some people who bike pack being totally self uh, or self-contained and then some people will stay at roofed accommodation here and there. So can you tell me a bit more about how your bike packing trip worked? So for me, it was definitely definitely more of a training aspect. Definitely wasn't roughing it at all. I had my girlfriend driving um, the car. So we both drove to the northern tip of Vancouver Island, Port Hardy. And then, yeah, we stayed at a campsite there. And then she would drive the car and then I would pack some of the lighter stuff with me. And then she would drive and then someday she would ride back to me and then we'd meet up and ride the last little bit of the leg together and then camp uh, at the campsite and then continue on the next day. But no, it was a super, super fun experience and it's a good way to travel around my my own little island here and get to see some new places that I don't always get to go. What inspired you or led you to use bikepacking as a means to work on your base miles? I think it was just, uh, yeah, sometimes when you're just riding similar loops uh, every day, I think it's fun to throw in some point-to-point stuff. You just get to get to cover more distance, I guess. Yeah, you get to see new scenery and yeah, I, I enjoyed it a lot. Will you do it again? For sure, for sure, yeah. I would love to maybe get a couple uh, friends out next time so I'm not rolling alone. No, it would be a super fun experience with, with some friends. And did you find that the bike packing was maybe a mental break? I asked that because you had a very busy spring uh, and early summer of racing in Europe, which included four World Cups. So was this also maybe, you know, while it was useful for base miles, was it mentally a, a recharge or a, a way to reset? Totally, yeah. I was thinking about the best way for me to um, do something a little bit different and just get that little mental break from the day-to-day stuff that I normally do. So, yeah, this is a great way to try something new and yeah, take a little break mentally for sure. During that stint in Europe, uh, you won the Under-23 Cross-Country World Cup race in Albstadt, Germany. 
It's a big deal for Canadian cycling fans because it was the first World Cup win by a male racer, Canadian male racer, since Jeff Kabush won in Bromont in 2009. It's been about three months since that victory. What is the significance of that win for you now? How do you, how do you look back at it? It's pretty special for me, for sure. Going over there this spring, just sort of not, uh, yeah, the season before I had, I had a top 10 in Nova Mesto and I knew I had a pretty solid winter and I got in a lot of good training and I was mentally super excited to get back to a full season of racing the first couple races over there yeah every every race you go to over there is like a mini world cup so i got in some really good practice races and then yeah showing up in elmstad i was just super motivated and um yeah it was it was super special i understand you got a message from kabush he congratulated you afterwards what did that mean to you he he's always helped me out yeah, we we chat occasionally. So yeah, it's pretty it's pretty cool talking to him and getting uh, getting some advice and yeah, just guidance for sure. During that race, at what point did you know the win would be yours? It was right down to the wire. I knew I was one of the stronger riders there for sure. Just from riding around the laps, I could stay pretty content, and I was definitely the one sort of in control. I would say, yeah, putting a couple attacks in and just testing the competition and I knew it was gonna come down to that last climb and once once we hit it I gave it everything I had and yeah I looked back and there was no one there so it was that that was the most special moment for sure is just taking that glance back at the top of the climb and and uh yeah it was smooth sailing to the finish line. A week after Alvstad came the World Cup in Nova Mesto in the Czech Republic. You won again that second World Cup race didn't go, in some ways, as smoothly as the first one. What happened in the final lap? The fi- final lap of that race, I guess the whole the whole race, it was it was pouring all week. The course was course was pretty slick, but yeah, no, the whole my whole plan went pretty well in that race. I managed to get away with a pretty solid lead, and then. Yeah, I just tried to keep it keep it smooth, but in the last lap, yeah, there was a couple a uh, couple moments there where I was getting pretty getting pretty scared. Um, the bikes were packing up with so much mud, and yeah, I dropped my dropped my chain at the right at the top, cresting one of the bigger climbs. So I was that was um, yeah, I just had to stay calm and get that chain back on, and I sprayed it with a little bit of water, and yeah, I just tried to tried to make it to the finish line. If I remember correctly, you were you were even talking yourself through it, kind of step by step. Is that what happened as well? Yeah, yeah. I find I find you got to really stay stay focused in those instances. Is more more than ever. You get off the bike and you're just your hands are shaking so much, and it's last lap. You have so much adrenaline. My my hands were shaking so much. I had to talk myself through it. Like, okay, let's get this chain on. Let's uh, let's get it in the right gear before I hop on and I'm in a hard gear. Yeah. So that was, that was, uh, I was pretty impressed in how I, how I handled that. I remember hearing that, that story and your, your composure amazes me to be honest. And, and, um, like I just compare it to say, uh, you know, my own forays into masters racing. And I think this is common for maybe a lot of amateurs like me or recreational riders, I should say, you know, something happens, we swear, we look around for sympathy, maybe from spectators, maybe we're, in, we're indignant because, you know, it was unfair that that happened. But, um, you know, that's why I'm not a not so good masters racer. Um, but what I want to know is, like, it, was your composure, uh, your calmness, is that learned or is it practiced or does it, does it come naturally to you? I think it's something I've been practicing for sure. Um, I think if you watched me maybe a couple of years ago when in that instance, um, maybe it would have been a little bit different. But yeah, you sort of learn pretty quick that yeah, if you have a mechanical and you yeah, you sort of lash out and it's not uh, it's not helping you at all. In those times, you just uh, got to tell yourself, uh, yeah, it's going to be the hardest part of your race is just staying focused and um, getting through those tough, tough and maybe quote unquote unfair instances. 
The two World Cup wins are the big news from your racing earlier this year. That's what a lot of us focused on. But is there anything from the other races you did in Europe, which weren't all World Cup level, but is there are there any moments from any of those other races you did in Europe that were significant to you? So when I when I'm over there racing anything that's not a World Cup, it's always I'm racing against the elites. So those first races I did over there were some of the some of the hardest races I've ever done. And I was riding with a lot of people that um that I would not typically be riding with. Um, yeah, that first race in Italy was, I was riding around with uh, Fumic and um, a couple, I think Simon Andreas and, and I, uh, I was just so jacked up and I thought, it, <laughs> I thought it was the last lap and I just attacked them with everything I had and, and I came around that last corner and the, the bell was going and I had one more. So that was one of the, I, I managed to make it around another lap, but that was one of the mental, mentally uh, super, super tough races for me. But uh, another sort of breakthrough was just, um, yeah, seeing what I was capable of and pushing past that, pushing to that next level, I guess. <laughs> Sorry, that's a great story. Um, and it, uh, I guess it's very top of mind now um, with the Olympics and uh, Annemiek van Vluten losing track of uh, her own laps. But, you know, it happens in racing. It just happens. For sure. Yeah. No, you're just, you're so, you're so focused. And um, yeah, sometimes that stuff just slips your, slips your mind. In an interview with Canadian MTB, your Norco Factory teammate, Peter DeZera, mentioned you. He said on the day before a race, you might ask him, so how am I going to win tomorrow? Now, maybe this only happened once, but Peter says you explained further that you were, you were talking tactics. Can you tell me more about this process? Does it often start with the question, how am I going to win? Or do you even say it that way? Because I feel there could be a difference in your mindset if you say, how can I win versus how am I going to win? Yeah, yeah. Peter and I are so super close and I, uh, I've, I've learned so much from him in terms of my, uh, my racing strategies and yeah, just growing as, a, growing as an athlete. He's always been very on the tactical side of racing where I'm I was sort of just the person to just put my head down and bury myself. Yeah, and you sort of learn very quickly racing at the top level that you can't just you can't just put your head down and pedal as hard as you can sometimes. It sometimes it comes down to yeah, just those different tactics and Peter is one of the persons that I talk to before before every race and just sort of chat over yeah, outcomes and scenarios and it helps me a lot to yeah run through those things in my head, and he's the uh, he's the person to to go to for sure. Now, do you say that though? Do you say how can I win or how am I going to win? Some sometimes when we're after dinner and it's getting late, I'm Peter. Peter, how am I how am I going to win this race tomorrow? <laughs> and sometimes it's more it's more formal uh, sit down, but um, I find I get super motivated when I'm. Um, yeah, I want to figure out how to how to win the race. What did you decide was the way you were going to win at Nova Mesto? Uh, Nova Mesto was a was a tricky one. It was a super fast start, and it was just there was just water spraying everywhere. You couldn't see much, and yeah, a couple guys got away, and I sort of just stayed content. And then yeah, I sort of caught them on the last lap, and there was this really tough climb that was just getting too muddy to. Um, too muddy to ride and yeah they were all trying to uh trying to ride it so i i sort of uh, I, I attacked pretty hard out of the second feed zone and into that uh the last descent of the course yeah instead of thinking um thinking anything of it at the bottom of the descent i just unclipped cyclocrossed and just sprinted as fast as i could up the climb and then yeah just super fast and flowing down the descent i want to say by the time i got to the start finish um i had 30 or 40 seconds yeah they were all just sort of uh spinning out and trying to trying to get up that climb and i just sort of um yeah just got off and sprinted up that climb and got away so that was sort of definitely the deciding factor for me to get away in the, that race 
I love that the cyclocross skills came in handy. I actually, I want to get into some, maybe some cyclocross a little later in our chat. You're from Cumberland, BC, Vancouver Island, and there's a, there's a pretty strong racing scene on the island. I'm thinking of the Island Cup race series for enduro and cross country, and there's also cross on the rock for cyclocross. Can you tell me the importance of the race scene on Vancouver Island in your development? It was huge for me. That's definitely how I found found this sport and fell in love with it. It started with just, um, yeah, some of the enduros and just going with my friends and riding all day. And then it sort of became my passion. And um, it was super cool growing up here. It was just, there was so much to do. There was a race every weekend. Yeah, and it wasn't until sort of Cross on the Rock where I started to find that fire where sort of it turned from just doing enduros to um, sort of smashing the pedals and yeah, it sort of just escalated from there. Remind us some of the other riders who have come out of that scene. There was a whole bunch of kids doing enduro back then, but, um, I know, so Emily Johnson's definitely still, still at it here in terms of the Islanders. It's getting uh, quite busy here. A lot of, a lot of people are moving here and yeah, I feel like every time I ride down the main road i meet another uh another cyclist that's yeah new to town so it's it's pretty special who have been some of your mentors who has given you some really good advice that has helped you in your racing career i definitely sort of came up through with one of my best friends holden jones we definitely battled a ton in junior and that's sort of when i fell in love with the whole training and racing scene and we sort of did we did everything together so that was super cool. Once I got onto Norco, it sort of opened up a whole new level of opportunity and I got to meet or I got to become close with a lot of um a lot of new people. Peter and Sean and Quentin, uh Lesby Haley were all super we're all super close and it's a super cool training racing environment we have. It's it's super special to me. As I've mentioned, it's the beginning of August as we're speaking at the Canadian Cycling Magazine office. Um, it's at this time of year when I allow my colleagues to say things like, hashtag cross is coming. You know, a- any earlier than August 1st, and I feel it's like playing Christmas carols before Halloween. <laughs> but uh, my question to you then, Carter Woods, Junior National Cyclocross Champion in 2018, will cross be coming for you this fall? I, w- I would definitely like to like to get out there for a couple races. I'm not totally sure what my fall slash winter is going to look like, but I would love to get out for some cross racing. I, I find it's sort of a mental break for me doing something different. Yeah, and I, I enjoy it a lot, so that would be super, super fun. And uh, Nationals is just down the road from you in Victoria, Bear Mountain? Yeah, yeah, you'll, you'll definitely see me there. Nice. Uh, when was the last time you raced cross? Ooh, it... It's been, it's been a while. Yeah. Last year, last year, everything was canceled. So it would have been, uh, would have been the year before that, I guess. Crazy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, I was going to ask if you missed it, but you're still using it at uh, cross country races. Yeah, no, I, I, I definitely miss the scene on the Island. Um, we have such a fun little weekend warrior vibe here on the Island. It's just, yeah, it's a blast to get out there. There's just so many, so many people and everyone's having a blast. So it's super cool. Can you tell me a bit more about the rest of your cross country season? I'm flying to Italy uh, later in this month. And then, yeah, that's world championships. I'm super, super excited for that. It's going to be a great race. And it was super good to have a little mental break here. And I think uh, yeah, it's going to be exciting the next few weeks for sure. After Worlds, I will finish off the World Cup season. And then we have Nationals uh, in Quebec. So that'll be, that'll be good to see the Canadian scene again. So how are you going to win at the World Championships in Val de Soleil? <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of factors in that. But yeah, I think I do best when I, I come in just mentally rested and sort of excited. I find I do super well when I'm excited to get out there on track and uh, yeah, see what I can do. So I think just stay 
stay happy and uh yeah go from there it'll be your first time riding that track but what do you know about it or what have you learned about it in advance i'll definitely be doing uh yeah some research i know i think they're going to make a couple changes to it but from what i've heard it's uh it's going to be a good track for me i like sort of those climbs where you can settle in a little bit it's not just yeah you can sort of just settle in find your rhythm stay smooth and yeah it should be good and what about the world cup in lenzerheide you were there in 2018 you finished 12th in the junior world championships yeah what are your thoughts on that world cup course i really like that course it's crazy it's already been that long since we've been there but um I'm looking forward to that. I haven't been there in a while, so um another another sort of new new location to go. But yeah, that course is super great. I love that love that pavement climb and then sort of just technical uh flats to the finish. So, yeah, it's going to be good. Well, Carter, thank you so much for your time and good luck with your second act to the season. Thank you very much. And that's the episode. It's written and edited by me, Matthew Pioro. I had a lot of help from mountain bike web editor Terry McCall. Over at Canadian MTB, he's getting out some of the best coverage of the scene in this country and beyond. I also had help from web editor Lily Hansen Gillis. The Canadian Cycling Magazine podcast is produced by Adam Killick. He composed the music too. Thanks to Ontario Creates for its support. And thank you for listening. Please rate and review the show, ride safely, and I'll talk to you later.